Scale Drawings by KScience.com. We're going to learn how to use scale drawings to find the resultant force of multiple forces acting on an object. So this cyclist has a driving force of four newtons. The wind produces a force of three newtons directly east of the cyclist. So this cyclist has a driving force of four newtons. As you can see here, we're drawing an arrow representing the four newton driving force of the cyclist. The length of our four newton driving force is four centimeters because the scale we're using is one centimeter equals one newton. One centimeter equals one newton. We said the wind produces a force of three newtons directly east of the cyclist. So our scale drawing will require a three centimeter line drawn to represent the three newton force from the wind. So remember, the four centimeter, four newton line represents the driving force in a forward direction. And the line going east from the cyclist represents the three newton force from the wind. But to work out the resultant force of the driving force and the wind, we must now draw the forces tip to tail. So we draw the three newton force from the wind from the tip of the four newton driving force from the cyclist. So the tip is where the arrow is of the driving force and the tail is the end of the arrows. So we've drawn the easterly three newton force from the wind going away from the tip of the four newton driving force of the cyclist. So we've drawn it tip to tail. You then draw the resultant force from the tail of the driving force to the tip of the three newton force from the wind. So this here is the resultant force and that measures five centimeters. So our scale is one centimeter equals one newton. So the resultant force of the driving force and the wind in this example is five newtons. Remember, resultant forces are a vector quantity. So we've got the magnitude of five newtons, but what about the direction? So we use a protractor to work out the bearing of the direction in which the resultant force is acting. So we use a protractor to work out that this is 37 degrees, 37 degrees. So the resultant force acting on the cyclist is five newtons with a bearing of 37 degrees. So the resultant force acting on the cyclist is five newtons with a bearing of 37 degrees. This is the problem you will learn how to solve. Press pause to attempt it. The method and the answer will follow. So the first force we draw was 10 newtons. So that'd be 10 centimeters. And that's going in a northerly direction. The other force is acting in an easterly direction. So we draw that tip to tail. And because the magnitude of the force acting in an eastern direction is three newtons, our line will measure three centimeters. So what is our resultant force going to be? Now measure the line from the tail of the 10 newton northerly force to the tip of the three newton easterly force. This line measures 10.5 centimeters. Using our scale, that gives us a resultant force of 10.5 newtons. That is the magnitude. What's the direction? So now we're going to use a protractor. So the direction of this force is 17 degrees. The resultant force acting on this object is 10.5 newtons with a bearing of 17 degrees. The magnitude of the force acting in a northern direction is 6 newtons, which means we draw a 6 centimeter line. The force acting in an eastern direction is also 6 newtons. So that line is also 6 centimeters. And we draw them tip to tail. So the resultant force acting here is 8.5 centimeters, which equals a magnitude of 8.5 newtons. So what is the direction of the force? We use a protractor, and that's 45 degrees. So the resultant force here is 8.5 newtons with a bearing of 45 degrees. Press pause to practice using those key words. The answers will follow. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just re-watch the video.
Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes.